Vilabiri community residents whose houses and properties were burnt and destroyed during Friday's military invasion have sent a save our soul message to the federal and state governments. The predominantly Ijo settlement in a remote local government area of Bialsa state was said to have been raised by military men in retaliation for the killing of four naval personnel by unknown gunmen. Speaking on the ordeal, the chairman, Alabini Rural Development Area, Frank Saide, whose house was among those raised, condemned the military action. He described it as an action taken too far, calling on the federal government to take steps to address displaced persons suffering. And the president, Ijo Yud Kansu Oelaini Pere Otubo, joins us via telephone from Bielsa to react to this development. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you for joining Hello. us on the news. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. According to reports, it's been alleged the military invaded Bili B Labiri community. As a resident, can you give us an account of what transpired? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. As some 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 weeks ago, we were greeted with a report that uh, some hoodlums, criminals, uh, killed military personnel in a, in a blabbery in Bayasa State, precisely a remote local government area. And uh, we, as a job people, as a job youth, we condemn that act is, is unforgettable, is unforgivable, is barbaric. The job people are peace-loving people. The job people are hospitable people. You can't afford to attack a platform and attacking the security agencies that are protecting critical government assets and lives and properties. We condemn it. We sympathize with the, with the Nigerian military. We sympathize with the families of the expatriates that were kidnapped by these criminals. We condemn it in its entirety. What do you think is responsible for this alleged invasion? This is this is this can be attributed to the unending military presence in the Niger Delta, particularly in your community. <laughs> The military has been in Ijo communities, in the creeks and in the Niger Delta for so many years. But the question is, are the problems why the military is moving to the creeks and communities of the Niger Delta, are the problems solved? Have we moved from bad to good? For me, the situation has only deteriorated. The military presence in the Niger Delta, in the Ijo community, has not helped the Niger Delta, has not helped the Nigerian state at all. It has further worsened the security situation in the Niger Delta. So part of the reasons why you have this kind of uh, miscreants attacking oil installations is because of the overbearing influence of military personnel guiding these oil facilities. And some of these youth feel intimidated by the presence of the military. So we have said this severally, that the solution to peace, the solution to making businesses by IOCs in the Niger Delta is not bringing the military to the creeks in the Niger Delta. The solution for us, as we have preferred and we will continue to prefer, is to allow the host communities to take charge. If there is a surveillance work, if there is a security of uh, 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 critical assets, allow the youth leaders, allow the communities and traditional rulers to nominate people from the communities to look after critical assets of federal government. When you bring the military, who is not even from the community, and what the military is known for doing 
is to continue to harass, intimidate, and embarrass those communities. So that is part of the problem, and that is, that has, that is what has brought us to where we are. What extent, so, to what I, extent I, are the damages done to lives and properties in the community? Say that again. To what extent are the damages done to lives and property in the community? Okay, it's, it's, it's very, very unfortunate that the military in the Niger Delta, particularly in job communities, is known for doing only one thing without getting results. Each time you hear that there is a kidnapping or there is some element of criminal activities anywhere in the Niger Delta, particularly the job communities, what the military is known for doing is to go into communities, kill and maim innocent community youths and community leaders, burn innocent people's houses together, instead of carrying out intelligent reports, instead of gathering intelligent reports to isolate this criminal from the law-abiding citizens of these innocent communities, the military has always moved to Ejo communities to burn down Ejo communities at the slightest provocation. So I tell you this afternoon that what the offense or whatever that the people may have done, although condemnable, but what the military has done in blabbery is, is genocide, is very, very wrong, to have burned down a community, particularly the palace of the traditional ruler of Blabri community. That is like destroying your, your primary evidence. That is like destroying your primary evidence. The traditional ruler is the custodian of the tradition of the people, of the, of the Blabri people. Okay, so so it's, I expected the military to work hand in hand with the traditional ruler from Blabri and other stakeholders like the IYC to partner and synergize to profile information. Okay, so that, that brings together. me to some of the so, expectations. Sorry to interrupt you, but um, I wanted to find out, you're trying to explain what are your expectations in, in specific terms? From the state Our and federal government. is that the military should do well to isolate criminals, pockets of criminals, from innocent communities, from innocent citizens of our community. You have not heard anywhere, any other part in the country, particularly in the northern region where we are around faced with Boko Haram. The military don't move into communities to burn down communities. But when it is an Ijo community, the only thing that the military has done is to burn down innocent Ijo communities, kill pregnant women, kill children. And that is what the military has been doing in the Niger Delta for over 10 years. And we are still in that quagmire. We are still in that situation and it has not changed. So we use this medium to call on the federal government to come to the aid of the Blackberry community. As I talk to you, I have sent the chairman of the Central Zone, IYC, Comrade Kennedy Olorongu, to go to Blabri to ascertain, to have first hand information. And the report I have is that the situation in Blabri is very, very terrible. The community people are still in the forest, children are still in the forest, they have no health facilities, they have no medics, they have no food. I call on the federal government and other emergency agencies to immediately move into Blabri community to find succor for Blabri community people. Otherwise, the situation will deteriorate. Thank of you. Because you know that this is not the first time the military is burning down in your community. I am a your community. I am aware. I know that you know a community called Ayakuromo in Delta State was burned down by the same military. A community called OT in Bayelsa State was reduced to the barest minimum by the same military. 
a community in Delta State, Bamatu Kingdom, was raised down by the same military. Uh, were these what is in your recent face times? Of the people? Excuse me, was what this in face? recent times or in the past? In the past. Okay. So I am trying to say that this is, an, this is a recurrent uh, uh, incident. That is what the military knows how to do. That's what I'm making. That's the point I'm making here. All right. So, um, I'm afraid yes. we, ha we have to um, end the conversation now so we can take other stories. Thank you very much for your time on it's, the news. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right, that was the President Ijo Youth Council speaking to us on the invasion of uh, Bielsa community.